On today's news, a WWE star breaks up with their fiance, WWE talent refused trademark consent, which AEW star did John Moxley want to start a tag team with, which John Moxley idea did Triple H steal, and Kenny Omega talks a potential WWE AEW working relationship. Hello everybody, it's just another solo Sunday. We're back. It is me, I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and without further nonsense and me singing in my room on a Sunday, let's talk about some news. So our first story today, and you've probably seen it if you've been on Twitter or Reddit or anything like that, uh, Bailey and her fiance, AEW's Aaron Solo, have broken up. They've, uh, they've called off their engagement, which is very sad. It's just always sad when people do that. Life just happens sometimes though, I'm afraid. And uh, Aaron Solo has issued a short statement on Twitter, uh, just talking about the, the announcement and why they've decided to go down different routes. So this newest member of the Nightmare family had this to say on the situation. He said, this has been an extremely difficult decision to make. Uh, Pam and I have come to the realization that we have a completely different idea of what we want our future to look like. Because of this, we feel that it would be in our best interest to call off our engagement and end our relationship. We have a lot of great memories together that we'll forever cherish. We've agreed to remain friends and will continue to, put, to support each other in our careers and lives. We ask that you please respect our privacy on this matter. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much, it's all there really. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Everybody just be respectful. Um, we all send our hearts out to both of them. It's not an easy time. It cannot be an easy time when uh, you make that decision just to call things off and go down different routes. But they've obviously done it. Um, they've... They think this is the best, uh, the, the best outcome for them both at this point, so wishing them all the best in the future. Now on to more WWE news, and it's, it's been revealed by Heal by Nature. They've uh, obtained a few documents, let's say, in regards to this story. But several WWE trademarks have apparently been denied due to, well, the absence of written consent from the talent. So they've, they've, they've applied to get these trademarks, they want these names under the WWE banner, they want ownership of them. But the talent's kind of sat back and gone, no, no, I, I, I don't want you to take my name and have it as yours and then I have to try and make a deal with you if, if I ever want to leave the company. It's not a it's not a great thing. It's something that FDR of AEW had to go through recently there to try and kind of swindle their, their trademarks away. It just it didn't really work out. So the trademarks were apparently all submitted uh, last October. Uh, they've yet to be accepted by the USPTO, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office, due to various reasons. But notably, the lack of written consent was the, the major reason for these. Um, obviously, like I said, Heal by Nature obtained these documents uh, that were issued in mid-February. Uh, the they did reveal that the following trademarks I'm going to mention now of, uh, they will be abandoned in six months time unless WWE provides these signed the signatures from the people that they're trying to get these these trademarks for. So here are the names. You've got Dominic Mysterio, Kaylee Ray, Chelsea Green, A Kid, Amali, Amir Jordan, and Aoife Valkyrie. So yeah, some big ones there. Dominic Mysterio is a massive one at the top. He's obviously trying to get his trademark. Maybe Rey Mysterio sat there and gone, no, Dominic, not a good, no, don't do that. You want to keep your name, have it as your own. So then if you ever do leave WWE like Rey Mysterio did for a time, you can still go and use his name. He's not going to be Mysterious Rey or something or Mysterious Dumb. It's not, not, not got the same ring to it, has it? Away from the land of WWE, though, we're here to talk about John Maxley, who himself was a former WWE star. We'll just, we'll just gloss over that. We'll get to that probably later on, actually. But he was talking to Metro. He was talking to Metro recently about his uh, blood sport match that did go down last night against David Boy Smith Jr. I don't know why I always think I'm going to forget that name. Very odd. But he was talking about who he potentially wanted to be in a tag team with at one point in AEW. He had kind of plans in his mind, thinking, yeah, I might want to go down that tag team route and just have like a super group at one point. But it's really sad because the person that he wanted to be in that tag team with is obviously the late Brody Lee, which is just really sad because imagine those two together. That would have been a hell of a tag team. They've obviously got history. They've got previous with the Shield, Wyatt family stuff, which if you go back and watch some of that stuff, I think I watched it over Christmas, the, um, the Elimination Chamber match, the Shield, um, not the actual Elimination Chamber match, but the match at Elimination Chamber between the Shield and the Wyatt family. It's just, it's aged really well. It's so good. And those two together would have been great. But he was obviously talking about this. He said, I had an idea to eventually one day, I like tag team wrestling, you know, 
and there's so many great tag teams here that I want to get to work with. But it's like, okay, I'm going to need a suitable partner, not just any random guy. I want a full, actual, good tag team run with a good partner. Make a real run at having a run in this tag division. The guy I was thinking about doing it with was Brody Lee. He was a good friend, and I worked, I'm sorry, I wrestled with him so many millions of times. Our styles would have complemented each other very well. You know what, Moxie, you're very right. Truer words were never spoken. He was obviously just taken way too soon. It still doesn't feel real that that, that happened. And it's just sad that what could have been. But obviously, it is now exactly where we are in this situation. Uh, AW paying fitting tributes to, to uh, Brody Lee. It feels like John Huber pretty much every other week. You've got minus one, negative one uh, on AW pretty much every other week as well. So... It just is what it is, what could have been. But John Moxley, obviously on this press tour for the blood sport and obviously Revolution, which is coming up very, very soon, March 7th. Cannot wait for that. He went and had a conversation with the Wrestling Observer Radio recently as well. I think it was the other day, like two days ago, something like that, where he got revealed as the Wrestling Observer Wrestler of the Year for 2020 as well. So that was a big, big salute there to John Moxley. Very deserved. He absolutely killed it in 2020. He was so good. But he was talking about... Talking about a few specific things. It was obviously in the, the 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 way of thinking about this this upcoming exploding barbed wire death match, which is coming up. And he just kind of talked about how he was trying to work in some pretty wild stuff whilst he was still in WWE. He was like, oh, I had a Hell in a Cell match that we were doing. I think it was a 2014 Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins. And he, he wanted to carve up the apron, do you know what I mean? Like the, the mat, pull it up and reveal the floorboards and then just do some crazy stuff, probably do with dirty deeds on the on the floorboards and all the rest of it. But apparently, uh, when he did pitch this to Vince McMahon and Triple H, they looked at him like he was effing stupid. So that's, yeah, not the best feedback to get from your bosses at that point. But then in a really weird twist, a kind of twist of fate, if you will. Sorry, Matt Hardy, sorry, Jeff, just had to throw it in there. Meltzer then reminded him that Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano did something very similar when they had one of their big takeover grudge matches. Gargano got a box cutter, cut up the apron or the canvas, whatever it was, pulled it back, revealed the floorboards and just absolutely obliterated Johnny on them. And they just went to war on these floorboards. And yeah, in response to this, he just kind of talked about like WWE's refusal to let him take things up a kind of extreme notch whilst he was in the company. And he said, Hunter liked thumbtacks when it was Cactus making him look good and putting him over. He loved thumbtacks back then. Whatever, dude. So yeah, a few more shots fired from Moxie. To be honest, if you listen to the interview, he's not really that bothered. He's just, it's more like, ugh, it was, just, it was right there. We could have done something and you were just being annoying as hell and idiots. And it serves them right now. Now you've got John Moxley going up against Kenny Omega in this incredibly anticipated match. And in this conversation as well, you, you, do, you just get the feeling from Moxley that he's, he's had a career in WWE where he was never really able to deliver on his promises and really deliver the, the kind of matches that he wanted to. Here... He's gonna do that. He's gonna really do that revolution. There's gonna be there's gonna be carnage. I'm I'm worried, intrigued, and just everybody pray for Rene Paquette, because that's oh, I would not want to be that lady in this position right now. And now for our final news story of the day, it is Kenny Omega talking a little bit about Triple H as well. So nice little segue through the stories here. I feel like they've all connected very well. Lovely solo Sunday work, if I do say so myself. And he was talking about how Potentially, AEW and WWE could work together at some point in the future, how he feels about that. Uh, this was during a conversation with Alex McCarthy of Talk Sport, and it was specifically when he was asked about Triple H's comments about WWE being open for business in terms of, you know, working with outside promotions. A lot of people were like, no, I don't think he really means that. But in Kenny's opinion, he said, people change from day to day. You could have a bad day and completely change your mind on a topic. But from when I did speak at length with Triple H, it really felt like he understood a lot of my thought process. And not only was I looking to unite and unify the world of professional wrestling and all of that, but he definitely got it. And then later on in the interview, he did go on to say, so when he does say things like he's open for business, I do think if there is a situation which could make maybe eliminate some of the worries and fears from the other people that have a say in making these things happen, I do see it being a reality. No prizes for guessing who he means by other people. I think the guy's got a very gruff voice and he's been in control for a very long time. That guy. So I think if there is a, a world where Vince McMahon is just suddenly pulled around to this idea and somebody just takes him into a room and goes, Vince, we're a big, big company. We're not going to get damaged by just working with AEW and it'll just give the people what they want 
You never know. Pretty much anything can happen in this wrestling world right now. We've just seen New Japan Pro Wrestling come and work with AEW and Impact, and that's going on. We've got the, the Forbidden Door has been smashed open. Let's just absolutely destroy the even bigger Forbidden Door, the Forbidden Castle Gates. Let's smash them down, WWE, and then we can just have Kenny Omega fighting, I don't know, Drew McIntyre for the undisputed AEW WWE World title. That's never going to happen, but you never know. And before we wrap up this video today, we have got one Twitter question and we just have to get it on this video because I got tagged in it and it had a dog in the picture and I'm a sucker for dogs, so it just is what it is. It was from Mark Solod. He said, Morning Gareth, what wrestler would you like to see win the Cruiserweight title and use that as a launching pad to the North American, NXT or NXT UK title? Take the long road like a Mysterio or Guerrero. Funny you should say Mysterio because I think Dominant Mysterio would be a very cool option for that. We talked about that a little bit on the news i believe yesterday or the smackdown review they all blurred together my mind's fudge at this point but, but potentially you could have i don't know isaiah swerve scott i mean i know he's had a lot of shots at that belt recently and not really come up with it he not kind of walked away with the belt but i like his new character now his new kind of edge that he's got he's very entitled very brassed off with the way he's being treated that could be interesting Maybe even as a left field pick, you could do Ricochet. I know, Ricochet, that guy who's just the lost guy on the main roster. You could bring him back to NXT, have him win the Cruiserweight belt and just go on a bit of a tear, show off what he is capable of. He's a once-in-a-generation athlete. And then have that be a way of revitalizing and reintroducing him to the NXT brand so he slowly goes back up the card and charges for the NXT title. And he could do something quite similar maybe to what Finn Balor's done and just... just have him, you can't really say have his star power give other people a rub because he's not really had the chance to be a star on the main roster, but I think it'd be very good for him as a wrestler and as a human. So that has been your Solo Sunday News. Thank you very much for watching. It's been my pleasure here just to bring you all these lovely stories on a Sunday. Don't forget, we've got Elimination Chamber. I, don't, I know, we've not even mentioned a single story about the Elimination Chamber, but it is happening. It is happening tonight. We're going to have a stream on What Culture. Uh, we'll have, I think it's Phil and Adam Wilborn. They're going to be talking about all this Elimination Chamber and probably entertaining you by throwing things up in the air and catching it in the mouth. It's the Elimination Chambers, I was told by Phil yesterday. So that'll be really fun. Go and check that out. Don't forget to like the video, share it, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling. Just click on all the videos, all the videos that are around me right now. Do that but most importantly above all this above all this stuff have yourself the best sunday and i will see you either through the week or i might even just see you next sunday we'll see bye bye